In today's video, I'm going over five ways that you can improve your eBay listings, which ultimately will convert to more sales. Welcome or welcome back to the channel. I'm the Common Lad and I sell plenty of different things on eBay, mainly video games, but I've been touching in tons of different categories and I make these videos to hopefully help you guys and to show you guys my processes and exactly how I run my stores. If it sounds like stuff that interests you, please consider checking out my channel. And if you like what you see, subscribe. With that, let's get right into the first thing that you can do to improve your eBay listings. Okay, so the first way that you guys can improve your eBay listings is by editing and modifying your titles that you're putting on your eBay listings. This may sound like a basic one, but this is something that's super important for the actual SEO of your listings and them coming up in search, and also for them being able to, you know, be promoted to the top of the search list and actually appearing in the correct search list when the buyers are looking for your items. So let's break it down. What are the most important things that you should be having in your titles of an eBay listing and what's going to get you the most views on your listings? Well, the first and most obvious thing is that you want the item name, maybe even a brief description of the item, depending on what kind of thing it is. If it's a vintage or an old item, it might have to be described with a few more words, but for a more modern item, you're most likely just putting in the make of that item, the name of the item, and the model number. Those three things are very important, guys. The make, name, model number. Very simple, but those have to begin on each one of your titles because a buyer could be looking up on either one of those. What else should you put? Well, this is a great question. You're definitely going to want to have the color of the item or any sort of item specifics about that one. Let's say it's a laptop. What kind of storage does it have? Or maybe what kind of processor does it have? The specifics to that item. If it's a piece of clothing, you definitely are going to want the color or the type of clothing it is. What is it? A t-shirt? A sweater? You see where I'm going. The specifics about the item. A couple the really important ones, you're going to want those in the title. Another thing to put in your title is the condition of the item. Is it used? Is it in good shape? Is it something where they might want to read the description before buying it? Definitely be sure to include that in the title so you're not misleading buyers and you're also being more transparent with them. And then my favorite thing that I put in my titles, which I think converts a ton of people, especially on my tech product, is tested. Or you can put, you know, for clothing cleaned. But something along those lines that, you know, re reassures a buyer into purchasing your item, makes them think that you've put the time and effort into cleaning it or testing it and making sure that it works for them, that's going to help convert on sales. Make that very clear at the end of your title. So there's a couple of important things you're going to make sure that you're including in your titles for every single one of your listings. Okay, number two guys are your photos. And there's actually two beginner mistakes here that everyone makes on eBay, which is just a non-starter. One of them is that people do not take good enough, clear enough photos. And it's a toll mess. But the other one, and it might surprise you, is that people take way too nice of photos. I'll start with the first one here, but we'll get into the second one here in a few seconds. Uh, first of all, you know, if you're, you know, not taking enough time taking your photos, if you're just, you know, spreading the item out, maybe it's unclear as to what it is, or maybe it's a shirt and it's all wrinkled or, you know, not folded out nicely. Uh, and, you know, maybe it's a tech product and you're not giving enough angles or whatever it is. The photos are really critical to your sale. I know as a buyer on eBay, I definitely scroll through all the photos that the seller provides when I'm looking to purchase something. And the photos are important. I want them to be clear. I want them to show any, you know, uh, problems with the item. And I also want to make sure that it is the same item that they're saying in the title. So I want to see that model number in the photos. I might want to see, uh, you know, certain angles or sides if it's a VHS or a DVD player, I want to see the front panel and the, the remote, whatever it might be. I want to make sure that I'm getting all angles of the item and I want to make sure those photos are clear and uh, that they're taken in good light. And that doesn't mean that you have to have a professional box. We'll get into this in a second, but just in good enough light that it's not, you know, dark and dingy and gross. It's not, you know, on your bed sheets and kind of all folded up. Uh, you know, you got to make sure that it's somewhere clear. Now that could be, you know, a hardwood floor or, uh, you know, on your rug or whatever. Uh, it doesn't have to be in a professional setting, but just something where it's clear enough to see the item and you can judge that yourself I'm sure if you were a buyer put yourself in their shoes and see how your photos look uh, but it's sort of a more basic thing that we don't realize and anybody that just takes a quick couple blurry photos and it's unclear as what the item is that's going to make it since so a very difficult you know time for the buyer to convert on that sale now on the other end of the spectrum we have sellers out there putting way too much time into their photos in some cases even making them look like stock photos now this can actually really hurt your listings on eBay you know it's a used marketplace people are looking for a good deal I know when I'm personally shopping anytime that I'm looking for things I'm scrolling right by stock photos right off the bat because I either think that they're a Chinese supplier or they're just not real. Some sort of scam, maybe something that's not real. I want to see a real item that somebody has. So I think something important to note is that you don't want your photos to look, you know, too amazing that they look like a stock photo or something from another website. Not to mention when you start to get into really complex, you know, nice looking photos, you're taking away a ton of time that you could be spending sourcing more items or doing your accounting or listing more things on eBay, just all the other aspects of the business that need more attention likely than the photos themselves. So something to note there is that you don't want to waste too much time on your eBay photos. Let's break down pricing, guys. Pricing is another super important one for eBay and is also a reason why a lot of things will sit for a while on the platform. Pricing is something that you don't just want to guess or come up with on your own. It's something that you want to do and take to eBay and compare against other listings that have sold. So an example of this is maybe you're selling, again, a certain type of shirt or, a, uh, or an electronic, whatever it is. You're going to want to take that uh, item name and model number like we discussed at the beginning of the video and look it up on eBay and then go over to their filters 
search and select on completed and sold listings and see what the other versions of your items or the other similar ones uh, that you have are selling for. This is really important because you don't want to price yourself out of the market where you know your item is just going to sit on eBay forever. That's going to slow your sales right down. And if you have a whole entire store comprised of items that are over the market value, well, you're just going to be sitting on you know a bunch of items that are not moving and you're going to be wasting your time. On the opposite end of that, you also want to make sure that your items aren't priced too low. I've seen stores where you know people just price things super cheap and then they're just selling really quickly and it's all great until you realize that you could be making an extra 10, 15 bucks on each one of those sales because you're underpricing the market way more than you should be. The completed and sold filters on eBay are one of the most valuable tools for any reseller. They're great for sourcing things and they're also great for pricing things when you're looking to sell an item. That's the best way to come up with a competitive price. You can also price on the higher end of you know the average sale price or you can price on the lower end, but I'd say stick within the range there that they're selling for and that's gonna make sure that your items are always moving and will also determine the amount of time that it takes for your item to sell. Next up, let's talk about the description box, another super important one that, again, I think you can go either ways on. You can be far too detailed on this and be wasting your time and not helping you know sell more items, or you can also be way, way underwritten on this and not have enough content in there for a buyer to feel comfortable buying your item. Here's what I like to remember about descriptions, guys. You want to say the most basic things about the item, so you don't want to get into the entirety of how the item works. You're going to assume that the buyer has already researched that. So you want the basic functionality of the item combined with the condition description of the item. That's the whole point of the description. And I know eBay has a separate area for a condition description, which I suppose you could use as well. Uh, what I put in my condition description is just to read the description because I don't want to have to write things out twice. So I go to my description, I give a brief summary of how the item works, what it does, and then I go ahead and I describe the condition of the item, any sort of imperfections with it. Uh, you know, is it overall good condition? Does it have any light scratches or marks or dents that the buyer needs to be aware of? I'm making sure to include all that stuff in the description. What else do I include after that? Well, that's probably about two or three sentences. Then I, you know, leave a space. Then I go ahead and I write out my shipping policy. I say, you know, we ship with Canada Post, whatever, uh, on the specific item. And you should expect the item between this date or this date, or actually, no, not between a certain date, but I'll usually say, uh, you know, between, you know, 10 days or 15 days, whatever that might be. You don't want to actually put a specific date in there because that's going to change based on how long the item's listed for. Nevertheless, a nice little shipping policy there, one quick sentence, and you're done. The last line of your description should be if you have any more questions or you require more photos about this item please feel free to contact me that leaves it open to the buyer to now reach out to you as a seller and actually feel comfortable you know asking for that other photo or asking about the one corner of the unit or whatever it is that's gonna help convert majorly because otherwise a buyer is just gonna keep scrolling and go to the next item but if they get attached to your item and they're they know that they can reach out and that you're gonna give them a reply maybe within 24 hours or whatever you put there uh, that's gonna make them feel a lot more confident not only about the condition of the uh, item and of your ability to sell things because you'd be like, okay, I'm confident in this seller. He's telling me or she's telling me to reach out and, uh, you know, contact them about any issues. But it's also just going to allow them to reach out about any concerns that they have and it's going to help with your conversions. So there you go. Nothing too complicated. You don't need four paragraph descriptions. That's ridiculous. But I also don't want to see anybody putting in black shirt and that's it. That is useless to the buyer. So don't even bother with the description at that point. Okay, guys, the last thing here that you want to think about in terms of improving your eBay listings, getting more conversions, more sales. This one's really important and especially for those items that may have been sitting for a little while on eBay now. This is the item specifics and I highly recommend when you're selling things on eBay to fill all of these out. They appear right before the description section when you're listing something on eBay and they're usually little tick boxes in terms of what features your item might offer or what model the item is, uh, where it was made, what you know the year it was that it was made and a whole bunch of things like that and this is super important for getting more buyers. eBay has a great filter system when you're looking to buy something on eBay. You search up the item that you're looking for on the left, it pops up, there's all those different options for filters that you might be looking for for. And depending on what you select there, they're usually, you know, like the little tick boxes on the side, depending on what you select uh, is what's going to appear in terms of the search results. Now, if you haven't selected the same thing on one of your listings, guess what happens? The buyer never sees your listings. Obviously, eBay's got a couple forced ones now, you know, I know in the video game space, they're making you the item title and the console it's for. And that makes sense because, again, as a buyer, if I was looking for a video game, I would be selecting those filters, making sure that I'm only seeing games for the console that I want to buy for, or only games with the title that I'm looking to purchase. But the item specifics extend way more than that. You know, the whole sidebar has tons of different options for different item specifics. You can even add your own. I mean, it goes on forever. And again, you don't want to be super thorough with this. You don't need to do, you know, everything you can possibly think of. But I think for all the generic ones that, you know, fill out there in the field of things that you can select, you should select every single one of them that's relevant to your product. Because the second that a buyer goes and selects any of those that you don't have selected, all of a sudden your item's not showing up in their search. Now, obviously be truthful with this though. Don't go ahead and just start selecting everything. You only want to select things that apply to your item. Because if a buyer buys something from you, and one of those you have selected is not true about the item, they can open a case with eBay, item not described, and you're not going to win.
win that because you clearly stated, you know, in the item specifics that it was something that it wasn't. So be sure to, you know, only select the things that apply to the item that you're selling. Item specifics are huge though, guys. Going back through your old listings that maybe haven't had too much traffic or are low ranking in the search results, that's a great way to boost them up and get them in front of more eyes. All the people using filters, you want to get in front of them as well. And you want to make sure that you're selecting your item specifics to match what people are searching for. Okay, guys, I think I'm going to wrap it up there. Hopefully you guys found some value in this video. I tried to go over the things that I learned, you know, while I was starting my eBay stores and while building them here over the last few years. And uh, those are some of the most important things that I can think of with regards to, you know, doing your uh, listings on eBay and improving the amount of sales you're going to get on those listings. If you guys found this video helpful or valuable in any way, be sure to go on below and leave a like on it. If you, you know, have any questions about the things I said here, if you have anything to add in terms of, you know, maybe making a listing easier to sell or allowing it to have more conversions, be sure to leave those down below in the comments. I'm sure everybody else in the community here would love to see them and be able to implement them on their own listings. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new and I will see you guys all in the next video.